hello hello and welcome once again to the faith in knitting podcast i'm so glad that you can join me my name is rhonda i'm coming to you this time not from our home outside of philadelphia i'm coming to you from our vacation place here at uh, camp of the woods in the adirondack mountains in new york it's such a beautiful place it's so peaceful and relaxing camp of the woods is a christian family camp it's a 100 year old camp so it's been here for quite a while and there are families that have been coming for generations um their grandparents who came when they were children and they brought their children as their children were growing up and now they're back with their grandchildren so it's just a it's a wonderful place there's lots of history it's beautiful our family has been coming up for the past 10 years um i think our children when we first started coming our children were seven nine and 12. I think that was their ages. And so it's been quite a journey for us. And we might be one of those families eventually that, you know, we come back with our grandchildren and just kind of continue the tradition on that way. So it's good to be here. It's good to be back. Again, it's always such a peaceful, relaxing, enjoyable place. I mean, they have cabins that, you know, we can, you can rent. There's cabins along the lake. It's situated right on beautiful, um, Lake Pleasant, which is just right outside the window there. I'm, I think I'm gonna to try to take some footage from our cabin so you can get an idea of where we are. They get um, really good speakers here that come and speak and teach the word of God. They have a fantastic music staff that just does amazing, amazing um, concerts. And they do like kind of recitals where they just show off their great musical ability and, you know, and the food is good. They have this big family dining hall um, and you just get to meet other families and you get to see the same family sometimes year after year if you come back at the same week. And it's just such a wonderful, peaceful place. It is a beautiful place to vacation, beautiful area, just slow and simple. And um, just like I said last time, a great place. There's children constantly running all around. You can let your children just roam around. It's just a great place. So we're happy to be here again. And um, I apologize if the angle is a little bit off. Um, I forgot to bring my tripod with us on vacation. So I'm having to kind of prop my phone up against the window sill. So the angle is a little off, but you know, hopefully that won't be too distracting. So I apologize for that. And, um, but I didn't want to miss um, the chance to record. I did want to um, spend time with you, just sit down and take a few minutes to um, check in, see how you're doing, hope, hope you're doing well, and uh, just catch up on the knitting um, and share a few words of encouragement. So again, welcome to the third episode of Faith in Knitting. There is a word that I believe the Lord has been bringing up to me uh, repeatedly over the past few weeks. And that word is inspire. And each time I see it on the page or each time I hear it, it either just stops me um, in my tracks and I just, you know, it just somehow it just rings in my ears or it just, just jumps off the page at me. And I, I, and I feel like there's something when that happens, when things kind of repeat themselves and they come up to me over and over again, I always kind of stop and think because it, it, that's how the Lord seems to speak to me. He, it's either he wants to show me something or he wants to, um, there's something he wants me to know. So I just stop and get still, um, and try to see what it is he's trying to tell me. Even last night, while we were having um, dinner at the dining hall here at Camp of the Woods, a woman came up to our table who I didn't, we didn't know. And she came up and she was very sweet. And she just talked to us um, and said she had seen us around camp and she had seen us there in the dining hall. And she just wanted to say hello. And she says, I, you know, she said that we always seem like such a nice family and we always talk and we pray together. And just a sweet lady. And she told us a little bit about her story. And she said how she used to play um, the viola when she was young. Um, but she had given it up. She had laid it aside. And years went by. And now recently, over the past few years, a new she has a new neighbor that's moved in who's a music teacher. And they talk about music a lot. And she said this woman had inspired her to pick up the viola again. And so for, for the past few years, she's been playing the viola again. But again, that word, when she said, this woman inspired me, 
to pick up the viola again. It just, I thought, I thought there's that word again. So I, you know, I've just been trying to listen. I've been trying to be still and focus on the Lord and see what he's trying to show me with this word, inspire. I looked it up in the dictionary and it has the meaning of to fill someone with the urge or the ability to fill something or do something, especially something creative. It's or to create a feeling, especially a positive one in a person. So it's something that you you create a feeling in people. You create an urge in them to do something, especially something creative. So it also has a second meaning, meaning to breathe in or, or to inhale. So inspire means, in its second meaning means to draw in air, to breathe in, to inhale. So to me, that's kind of connected with life. We, If we don't draw in air, if we don't breathe in, if we don't inhale, we're not going to live much. You know, we're not going to live very long. So inspire has something to do with life, with, uh, with continuing to live. And then I got the idea about expire because that seemed like the opposite of inspire. So expire means to exhale air from the lung or another meaning is to die. So inspire, inhaling air connected to living and life, expire to exhale air connected to and meaning actually to die. So inspire seems to be a very important word. And I, I'm just, I still haven't really found out what it is the Lord is trying to show me with this word. But again, it comes up repeatedly. And um, I'm just trying to figure out what it is that he wants to show me. So I started thinking about inspire and I've been thinking about the word a lot. So I started to think, what inspires me? What what inspires me? I sat down and I made a list of the things. I started thinking. As I said, I tried to get still and listen. So I sat down with the, that question. What inspires me? And I made a list. And the first thing that came up on the list, of course, is God. God inspires me. God is connected to life. God is connected to um, what sustains me and keeps me alive, what gives me breath. Um, so God inspires me. His love for me inspires me. It inspires me to love other people. His goodness and his mercy inspires me to try to be kind and show kindness to other people. So his, and his word inspires me. It inspires me in how I want to live. It inspires me and shows me. It leads me to a better way of life, to a higher way of life. And so his word inspires me. Its creation inspires me. I'm inspired by its beauty and its variety and especially the sky. The sky, the clouds. Probably if you watch this channel a lot, you will see lots of pictures or video of clouds. Because clouds, there's something about clouds that just really inspire me. And it just makes me long for heaven. It makes me long for... Um, to just fly away and rest. Clouds are just, I don't know, something about them. They just draw me in. Just a beautiful cloudy sky with big puffy white clouds. It just, I always have the feeling that I could just walk along the clouds and I could lie down and rest on the clouds and it would be the most beautiful, peaceful, wonderful rest ever. And so that inspires me. Creation, nature, the beauty of it inspires me. Birds and trees and flowers and rivers and lakes, like this beautiful Lake Pleasant that we're, uh, we've been next to for the past week. It inspires me. Books inspire me. I am a big reader and books inspire me. They move me. They cause me to dream. They instruct me. And sometimes it causes me to hope when I am um, feeling down and discouraged. I can read something in a book 
especially the Bible. Again, because I said God's word inspires me, but I could read something and the words could be so full of life and so full of hope that it inspires me. So books are a big inspiration to me. Artistic creativity. Any sort of artistic creativity inspires me. Music inspires me. Painting, music, beautifully crafted woodwork or beautifully beautifully crafted quilt or knitted item. It inspires me. It inspires me to want to do that myself. It inspires creativity in me. It inspires a spark of life and energy that makes me want to um, produce something or create something. So artistic creativity, if you can see um, a dancer who is just beautifully gifted and dancing and it makes these difficult, difficult movements and actions seem so beautiful and effortless. It inspires me. Um, or someone who can sing really well, someone with a beautiful voice. Those kind of things also inspire me. So I'd like you to think, what inspires you? What are some things that inspire you, that inspire you to live differently or think differently? What inspires you? What moves you? What lifts your heart and causes you to just breathe in? Just It causes you to inhale. It causes you to draw in air, draw in life. What inspires you? I would recommend or I would suggest to whatever those things are, whatever inspires you, to be sure to add more of those things into your life. Be sure to bring in things into your life. Fill your life with those things that inspire you. The slogan there's a, that came to me is to live inspired. Live inspired. Bring those things that inspire you into your life, whether it's the ocean. I know a friend of ours who always talks about how water is what inspires him. He said he could just sit at the ocean and just watch the waves come in and watch the waves go out over and over. The sound of it, the rush of the water, the power of the waves. He said that inspires him. So I'm saying, find those things that inspire you. Make a list of things that inspire you. And make sure you bring those things into your life. Bring those things that inspire you more and more into your life so that you can live inspired, live motivated, live um, with just such an urge to do something. Like, live with that urge. Live also to inspire others. Think of that, that what we do inspires others like the woman at the dining hall that I mentioned she said the this the neighbor was so focused on music so taken up and passionate about music that it inspired her to go back to her musical history and pick up the viola again so live to inspire others live inspired and live to inspire others we can inspire our children we always want to inspire our children to have a better life than we had, to go further than we have, to do more, to be more than what we are. So we can inspire our children. We can inspire our neighbors, like the woman that I talked about from the dining hall. We can inspire our friends and our family. Live inspired and live to inspire others. Inspiring people. Think about inspiring people that um, that you may know. There's so many people, either not even just celebrities or well-known people, but people in your own life. Who inspires you? Who are people that inspire you? Or what are character traits that inspire you? To me, someone who has courage, a courageous person, that inspires me. It inspires me to be more courageous. When you look at some of the old figures in history, who did great things, um, they are inspiring. They are inspiring. I like to read biographies. Um, one that I read recently, or it's been a few years, but I read the Corey Ten Boom biography, The Hiding Place, and that kind of courage, especially her father. There was something about the char her father and how she explained his character and his, um, there was a nobility about him. There was just a, um, and a deep integrity about him and a courage about him 
as he was determined to make a difference. He was determined to do what was right, determined to help the Jews who were being persecuted by, um, by the Nazis that were in their area. And his courage inspired me when I read about her father in that book. So think of inspiring character traits. Think of inspiring people. And again, books, movies, songs. There are some songs that just, I hear each time I hear them, they just lift my spirit. They lift my heart and they encourage me and they inspire me. That there's so much inspiration that we can draw from in our lives. So I encourage you to think about that. Live inspired, live to inspire others. And of course, I went to the Bible to find out um, about what the Bible says about inspiring. One thing that it says in 2 Timothy 3.16, it says that all scripture is inspired by God. God inspired men to write these scriptures down. So all scripture is inspired by God. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3, it says, We remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. So the hope that you have in Jesus Christ inspires endurance. It gives us that certainty that we can make it because we have hope in Christ. So our hope in Jesus inspires endurance in us. It lets us know that we can make it. It, it moves us and it gives us the urge, the ability to do something. It gives us the urge to keep going. It helps us to keep going because it inspires us to endure. Another good one from the Bible it's Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 40. And this is God speaking. He says, I will make an everlasting covenant with them, meaning with his people. He says, I will make an everlasting covenant with them. I will never stop doing good to them. And I will inspire them to fear me so that they will never turn away from me. He says, I will never stop doing good to them. And I will inspire them to fear me. And that word fear does not mean to be afraid of him or to, to fear him. It means to reverence him, to have a deep reverential respect for God. So he will inspire that feeling in them so that they will never turn away from him. Because he wants that relationship with them. He wanted that relationship with them. And he wants that relationship with us. He will inspire us to have this reverential awe and respect for him so that we will never turn away from him. He gives us that feeling. He, he brings that feeling up in us. He inspires us. And as I said before, that is one of the great things, a great inspiration in my life is God and his word and just knowing his character. As he said here, I will never stop doing good to them. And I believe and I know that that is still the case. That is God's heart. That is his character. His, he will never stop doing good to us. He desires to do good to us. So he has this promise and you'll make this covenant. I will never stop doing good to them. I will inspire them to fear me so that they will never turn away from me. And God wants that because he wants the relationship with us. He wants us to have that reverential awe and respect for him so that our relationship with him, we're in the proper position of relationship with him so that he can never stop doing good to us. And we can always be in a position where he can bless us and do good to us. And he will inspire that in us. He says that he will inspire that in us. So it's nothing that we have to conjure up. He will inspire that in us. Just as he inspired the men of old to write the scriptures, he will inspire in us that reverential awe 
so that we will never turn away from him. He will carry that relationship. So again, I encourage you to think about the things that inspire you. Think about the things, the people, the places, um, books, movies, songs. Think about those things that inspire you and bring those things that inspire you more and more into your life. Live inspired. Live to inspire others. The Bible tells us to encourage each other more and more, which would also translate inspire each other more and more as we see the day approaching, as we see the day of Christ's return approaching. Let us continue to inspire each other and encourage each other more and more. So bring those things into your life. Live inspired. Live to inspire others. Spur each other on to good works, the Bible says. And that is another way of saying inspire each other. Inspire each other to good works. Help each other to do the things that we should do. Be an encouragement. Be an inspiration. Be a motivator of good works in others. That is what God is asking us to do. And he inspires us. He is the ultimate inspiration. His word is the ultimate inspiration that inspires us and motivates us to do the things that we should do, to live noble, peaceful, honorable, good, and pleasing lives. So I just encourage you once again to um, think about the things that inspire you. Inspire, breathe in, live, live inspired. Live to inspire. So the first thing I'd like to show you as far as the knitting project, I don't have any finished objects, but I do have a few that I'm working on, some works in progress. This is one that you've seen the past two episodes, the first two episodes actually. Uh, it's called the Tupper Sweater by Interweave Knits. And I am almost finished with it. The body is, let's see if you can see, I'm, I still have a lot of strings hanging down. But I, I mentioned in the, in the last episode that I was thinking that the sleeves might be a little too short because I had had trouble with making the sleeves and then attaching them to the body because the way the sweater is constructed, you knit the body and then you knit both of the sleeves and then as you get to the right point, you attach the sleeves to the body. And I had never done that before. And I was going by the instructions which says when the sleeves are 18 inches, then they're ready to be attached to the body. But my arms are, I have very long arms, so I wasn't sure if that was gonna be enough length for me. But I did try, I have tried it on, and it seems that the sleeves might actually be long enough. They may be a little shorter than I like them, but they, I think they will work. Um, so I'll try it on for you, and you can see how that looks. But I really like the little garter stitch cuff and garter stitch along the hems along the hem and in the pattern the way the pattern is written it's a very simple construction just a simple sweater but it has this beautiful cable around the yoke and with this kind of striped fabric this striped pattern I thought the cable design might get a little um, lost so I decided to try to work the pattern leaving off the cables and so I've done that and it seems to be okay. Even when I try it on, it seems to fit well up here, but it's such a pretty pattern. As I said, I'm going to redo it. I wanted to try the pattern again in a solid color yarn and actually adding in the cables because it's so pretty. It's just very simple and elegant and with the beautiful cable um, yoke. But again, this time I left off the cable because of the stripes and I 
think the fit is good. I will try it on and you can have a look. There's still a lot of strings attached because I haven't finished it yet. But, um, and I was planning because of not having the cables, I thought with just this simple little band of garter stitch, it might be too plain. And I think with, with the cables there, they don't need anything more than this simple garter stitch um, neckline. But without the cables, I thought maybe I would make a wider garter stitch neckline, something that adds a little bit more interest than this simple little band. But I think it still works. I did not make the, the neck band wider like I had thought I would, but I think it still works. I will try it on and I'll show you how it looks. Okay, here it is. I'm trying it on and there again there I, everything is still attached so there's strings everywhere but you can see the neckline it's very simple it doesn't have the cables but um, with the stripes I think the stripes add enough kind of interest there and they go a very nice um, curve around the yoke and then just the simple um, garter stitch band which I think it looks well. I think it looks nice. And then, again, with all of my strings hanging down, the length is good. And here's the sleeve length. As I was telling you, I thought it might be too short, but I think it actually, I think it actually is, um, see, it's a little shorter than I usually like. But um, as I said in the picture of the pattern picture, she has, also pretty much the same length on the sweater, but she has a shirt sleeve that comes out. So, and then she has a collar that comes up over the top of the sweater. So I think if I do that with the shirt sleeve and a, and a collar, I think it'll be very acceptable. I'm very happy with the way it turned out. It's so soft, so warm. And um, yeah, I still gotta do the underarms, but you can see in the back, and I still have my needle in there. But all in all, it's coming together very well. And I think uh, next time I will have it all finished, no strings attached, and I'll show you um, how it, the, the final result of how it comes out. So very pleased with it. I'm very happy, but it's so hot. <laughs> Here, I'm gonna take it right off. So that was the Tucker sweater. I'm very, very uh, pleased with how it came out. The next thing I'm going to show you, I showed you uh, in the last episode, The Big Snowy Owl by Pearl Soho that I'm working on. And I had said I had ordered the yarn for the eyes and I was just waiting for it to come in. Well, it came in and I have it here. And the, the um, wool for the owl itself is Patton's Classic Ro Wool Roving. Patton's Classic Wool Roving. And the color for the owl is Aran, A-R-A-N. And so I'm matching it with, um, this is the natural. Let me see if you can see that. Natural, Patton's Classic Wool Robing in natural. This is also Patton's Classic Wool Robing and this color is low tide. It's really pretty. It's not the blue that they use in the pattern, which I think is so pretty. I couldn't find the blue. This is more like a, a teal, kind of greenish blue, or yeah, actually it's more green than blue. But I think it should work as well. So the owl will have green eyes instead of blue eyes. But um, I think this will be really pretty and it's the same wool, the same, yeah, it's wool, the same wool, so that should work well. And the dark color for the eyes, I could not find in the Patton's Classic Wool, but this is Bernat. I think it's called Bernat Roving. So it's still roving, but it's by a different company, Bernat. And this is color Flint. So it's a dark charcoal gray, which will be used for the center of the eye and the beak on the owl. So I haven't started making the eyes yet, but I have the wool, I have the yarn to get started. So hopefully next time, by next time, I'll have the eyes made and attached and the snowy owl will be finished and ready to go off to college with my daughter in a few weeks. So that's kind of one um, work in progress. So the next work in progress I have, and this is one I also mentioned last time, I, it's the chunky gray blue sweater. 
and um this is the yarn that i showed you last time that i was using it's by, by two of wands and i didn't see last time that this is also in collaboration i guess with lion brand there's a little lion brand logo but so it's a collaboration between lion brand and two of wands and the color is called magic hour and it's a really pretty um gray uh, bluish gray and the thickness it's a bulky weight yarn um very soft and let me see what the it's 80 percent acrylic and 20 percent wool so that is from two of wands and lion brand this is how far i've gotten so far i've got it um i think it's going to be really pretty it's this wool this yarn is so soft and it feels so good against the skin it's, there's no scratchiness i guess because it's only 20% wool and 80% of it is acrylic. I've had trouble, as I mentioned once before, I've had trouble with wool. Wool tends to be very, um, a little itchy, a little scratchy for me. So I would like to use it. I like the look of it, but I don't, it's not comfortable um, to wear against the skin. So maybe if I kind of gradually increase the amount of wool in the yarn that I'm using that might help I don't know but this is again 20% wool 80% acrylic and this is how far I've gotten so far on my chunky gray blue sweater my chunky gray blue scarf and it's just going to be beautiful it is I think 101 inches long it is a long long shawl you just wrap it around and I think for fall it's going to be beautiful. I think by November it gets to be cold enough where we are to wear it. It's an easy, easy knit um, and it's just a, a very nice simple design. Only it's just knitting and purling. That's the only, you know, that's all there is. There's nothing else besides knitting and purling. Nothing complicated. The only complication is, the only kind of tricky part is that you have to really focus as you're knitting because there's like the, the the instructions are like knit five, purl seven, knit three, three times, and then go to knit five, purl three, knit three, purl five, two times. So you just have to kind of, you do have to focus on it, but it's very simple, very easy. And I think it'll be just a really comfortable, easy to wear, enjoyable to wear, um, big shawl that you just wrap around so I can't wait to finish it and just wrap it around it'll be ready for fall hopefully so um yeah I think that's all that I can say about it for right now I hope to have a lot more of it done for next time in two weeks when I record again and you can see the progress um very much looking forward to it and I know I, I don't mention the designer's name because it is very difficult I don't, I know I'll mispronounce it. I think it's Lenbov Niz, Niznik Kovalchuk. So that's why I don't pronounce it because Lenbov Niznik Kovalchuk. And I know that I'm not pronouncing it correctly, but um, she is the designer and she, it's, I think it's her picture that's, that you see modeling this, the scarf. So beautiful design. I got it from Pinterest. It was a, it was a, uh, well, not a free pattern, but not very expensive at all. And I got it on Pinterest. So you can find it. I'll put the link below and you'll be able to um, find it and knit it if you'd like. My last work in progress is I started from this Modern Daily Knitting Field Guides. And I think these are very popular. Um, Kay Gartner and Ann Shea. They have these very popular uh, field guides, these little books and in each book, they feature a different designer. And this one is Mary Jane Mucklestone, who did the uh, 200 knits that I talked about in the first two episodes. And I thought these little, she has these cute, cute little mittens. Look at those. With just a little bit of Fair Isle color work on the cuffs. The, the colors are so pretty. And um, I thought this would be a good one to start with. Well, as a second project, because I did do my knitted hat. Um, these little mittens, here's another picture. Very sweet. Um, 
and look on the back she has just different fair isle color work type projects um it's another picture you can see of the mittens and that little hat is so sweet too so I, I might try to do that one too as well but i just started the mittens so i haven't gotten very very far but you can see and i've worked with um i've worked with double pointed needles before but it's been a while so i have to kind of get back into the feel of it it's a little it's a little fiddly with the three needles and plus the fourth needle that you're actually working with but you can see the color work there and it's coming along. Um, now that's, I think, the hardest part, trying to do color work with two yarns using four needles. It's, yeah, I think that's the hardest part done. And I think it came out okay. Um, the yarn that I use is Let Lopi yarn because this is featuring um, Let Lopi, all the, the, all the patterns in the book she uses Let Lopi yarn. So, um, the one I use is, let's see, the, my main color, it's still attached, so let me bring this over again, um, is this pretty blue, and it's, this is a beautiful yarn to work with. It's thin, it doesn't feel scratchy, but it just has a beautiful color. Let's see if you can see that better. Again, this bluish, kind of bluish gray, this rustic blue, I call it, that I like so, so much. And I paired it with this one. I'll have to find the names. I don't think I, I, well, I didn't. I didn't bring the bands with me on vacation, so I don't have the names to tell you, but I will put it on the screen. Uh, this is a beautiful, rich, kind of golden honey colored brown. The sun is starting to come in. Let me see if you can see it. Hopefully you can see it. I think that looks pretty good from right there. Um, so with that, and then the third color is a lighter color, um, kind of a cream. So I put these two together. I wasn't sure because the, the design that I'm using, it has the darker color, the honey color with the blue, with just a little bit of the cream put in. And if you, let's see. It's hard to, it's very subtle. And at first I thought, I don't, I don't think it would work because you can't see the lighter color, but it's just a little speck right in the middle. And then between, and these are called beads. So there's a little of the light cream in the middle, one stitch, and then I think two stitches on either side of each bead. So I think it'll work. It'll be very subtle, but um, it's there. It's very subtle, but I think it'll work once they're finished and you know I'm able to wear them and I think you the color the little subtle color change in there will be visible um so yeah I think so far so good I'll keep working on it and hopefully by next time again I'll have at least one mitten done and I'll be able to show you and hopefully the fit is good so I'm very happy with it so far um and the let lope yarn again it feels it's a little scratchy, I think. It's a little scratchy. But again, my skin is very sensitive to um, to wool. So I will work with it. And on the hands, maybe the hands are not as sensitive as maybe like the neck and or the chest area. So um, maybe having it on hands as mittens won't be quite, quite um, too uncomfortable. But yeah, so my mittens are coming together. Getting, gonna continue working on my chunky gray blue scarf and I'll show you that progress next time again very easy enjoyable knit and I have my wool my yarn for to finish the eyes for my snowy owl so hopefully next time also I'll be able to show you that and um I got the tucker sweater, which definitely should be finished by next time. With the, I'll just finish the collar and then under the arms, and uh, I'll be able to model that for you and show you that. So that's it for the knitting portion. Um, I hope everyone is doing well. I hope you're enjoying your summer. I hope you're staying safe, um, taking care of yourself, enjoying your knitting, getting some time to relax and rest, 
and thank you for watching. It's so good to be part of this knitting community. Um, there's so much, you know, I think knitters are just nice people. I think knitters are just friendly people. I've gone to different, um, you know, knitting groups and knitting clubs and just the nice, nice people that you meet. So, so thank you once again for watching the Faith in Knitting podcast. Thank you for coming to sit with me a while and just being able to share with you what I'm doing. And I'd like to hear from you. I'd like you to let me know what you're working on, the different projects that you have on your needles, where you might be vacationing. I'd like to hear that as well. And I'd just like to finish this time together by prayer. Um, so if you would bow your heads with me and pray. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this time again. Thank you for everyone watching this podcast. I pray that you would bring your blessings down upon them, Lord. I pray during this summer season that you would give them rest. You would give them relaxation. You would give them restoration, Lord. You give them time with family and friends to enjoy. I pray that you'd give them time to knit as well, because that is also our form of relaxation. So thank you, Lord. Thank you for the beauty of this season. Thank you for the birds that sing and just all the beauty of it, the flowers that are around and for time to get away. I pray that everyone gets a chance to get away to a different place where they can relax and rest, Lord, and just reconnect with you. So I thank you for that, Lord. I pray your blessing once again on everyone watching. Give favor, Lord. Give strength. Give rest. Give peace. We thank you. We give all of our praise to you, and we pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you once again for watching the Faith in Knitting podcast. I look forward to joining you again. Please leave a comment. If, if you're happy with the content, if, if there's something else you want to see or something you want to know about, write in the comments and let me know, and I'd be happy to include whatever um, new content or new things that you'd like to see. Thank you for stopping by. I pray blessings upon you. I look forward to spending time with you next time. Thank you so much. God bless. Love you. Take care. Enjoy your summer. See you soon. Bye-bye.